Hello, hello, hello. How is everyone doing? Happy Monday. It's January 8th. I can't believe we're already a week into the new year. How is everyone doing? How is everyone doing? Oh my God. Last week or the last two weeks was definitely intense. And I spent the whole entire weekend recharging with the family and that felt very good. I'm not gonna lie. I just needed to decompress from the last two weeks. It was a lot, but I do wanna say thank you to every single person who was here during those lives and also anyone who caught the lives afterwards. Thank you so much for supporting this channel and thank you so much for you know, just supporting me on my journey of, you know, speaking about things that are incredibly hard for me to do so. And so, hi, David. I hope you had a great weekend. Will you be doing the Jeffrey uh, Epstein episode? Yes, I will be. And I did watch the Golden Globes. Um, I did watch the Golden Globes. It was, you know, I'm not a huge, I'm not a huge fan of the Golden Globes in general, just because in my personal opinion, I've seen them praise people that they really shouldn't as a survivor. And so I have a lot of mixed feelings about the Golden Globes. Um, but that's that, that's another time, another <laughs> episode. Um, but oh, I'm wearing, I got the I got the sweater in the mail. So I'm wearing the Power to Survivors sweater today, which I'm so happy about. I don't know who in the chat already has it but I finally got it and it's so cozy and it's so cold here actually in Los Angeles. It's been cold for the last few days and, um, but I'm kind of liking it, but <laughs> now I have like a little heater next to me here in the studio cause it's kind of cold in here. Um, but I'm so happy to get the sweater and thank you again to everyone who has purchased any of the E Predators merch because that helps spread the awareness and also helps make this sustainable. Oh my God. Okay. So you guys, right around the time that I was beginning to do the whole like guess who segment of E Predators Daily, I was having to collect evidence when it came to my stalker violating his RO restraining order. And, you know, I'm taking like snapshots, screen recordings, you know, this is something that people don't talk about a lot. But if you're not, you know, I don't know, what's a Lady Gaga or something, right? If you're not somebody who has tons of money and has resources for lawyers, etc., it falls on the victim to collect all of the evidence, etc. Um, in general, just like totally falls on the victim. And so I was doing just that. I was collecting the evidence, et cetera. And I don't know what brought me here. And I, I was like, okay, let's look at the followers. Let's look at the, who this person is following. How many troll accounts does my stalker have possibly, et cetera. And I then went, okay, I'm going to go through as many followers and following that Twitter allows me to see when it comes to my stalker who now if you haven't seen this episode it you know it's the episode titled my stalker uh, shift and I started looking and scrolling and for the most part you know I'm just like okay 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 I, I don't really recognize any of these people and then I would go back. It was so weird. It was like, I don't know if you guys have ever had this experience before, but you feel like someone's or something is, I don't want to get wild with this, but it felt like something was guiding me <laughs> in a sense where I just kept going back to the following and followers and scrolling. And then I saw this person and I go, who, who is this? It just stood out a little bit. And so I clicked on it. Who is this? 
I scroll down and I see something about Drake Bell. I'm like, okay, maybe this is a fan of Drake Bell. I keep scrolling and I see a post about Dan Schneider. My whole body grows in time. And I'm looking at my phone and it says, my friend, Dan Schneider. I'm looking at my phone and my husband was working at the time. So I was alone. And I'm like, wait a minute. This person who is following my stalker is friends with Dan Schneider? I mean, you guys, like, you have to understand, no one knows my stalker. You know what I mean? I just recently, last week, told the world who my stalker is. This is before that. And what was wild about it, when I clicked on his profile, it said follow back. Because this individual, who's Dan Schneider's really good friend, was following me. I'm like, wait, wait, wait. Why, why is this person following me? Why is this person following my stalker? And just for a little bit of a refresh, when it comes to what I was speaking about last week. I didn't meet my stalker or talk to him or he didn't reach out to me until after the Nickelodeon protest. After. And I don't know who here in the chat has seen my Nickelodeon protest, but I really went all in. <laughs> I really went all in. I wasn't just protesting Dan Schneider. I was protesting Nickelodeon as a whole, as an institution that, in my opinion, was covering up a lot. Covering up a lot. And I'm not sure they liked that that much. You know what I mean? I'm not sure they enjoyed me protesting, calling out all of the uh, alleged predators that have worked underneath them, et cetera, telling my story. I don't think they liked that that much. And so what's weird about it, other than Dan Schneider, is something about my stalker shift just never sat right with me in the sense where, where did he come from? How did he really hear about me? How did it get this bad? How is this his, his intention going into it, et cetera? And I always had like a little bit of a gut feeling that it was possible that someone was behind him. But it was always just this looming thought. I never had anything concrete to back it up until that night. <laughs> it was like 1 a.m. Kids are asleep. I'm scrolling and I'm like, what the fuck is this? So before I could tell you all that story, I had to give you all of the details when it comes to the predators, the origin story, I had to talk about my stalker, let you all know who it is, especially for safety reasons. But to be honest with you guys, I'm, I'm feeling more unsafe than ever. Because if, if Nickelodeon, Dan Schneider, this individual who's friends, openly friends with Dan Schneider, has any involvement with my stalker, 
that's pretty serious. And I mean, we've heard a lot about this throughout history when it comes to controlled opposition or, you know, um, infiltrating movements, spies, like, you know, I'm not saying this. I, I never thought I would be doing this. Okay. I can't even believe I'm saying these words out loud. I never thought I'd be saying this, but after realizing what I realized, I don't know if I can hold that in those suspicions. It's pretty serious. So we're going to get into that today. I'm going to show you who this individual is. I'm going to show you the receipts when it comes to this individual having a connection with Dan Schneider and my stalker. You have to remember my stalker. There, no one know like he he he. No one knows him. Okay, no one knows him. There is no way. There is no way. I don't even know this person, John. I don't even know this person, John, who worked for Nickelodeon. How do these individuals know one another? And I would like to remind everyone here today, I have a restraining order against this individual. Court-ordered restraining order. Like, very, very serious. So we're going to get into it today. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you to all the mods. Um, and I, I really also want to do this for safety reasons because for real, like people should know. I used to think, you know, he, this individual was standing alone, but I'm not sure about that anymore. I'm not, I'm not sure about that anymore. And so we're going to go through it. Ah, I, it makes me nervous. Like, I'm actually wondering if possibly, you know, Dan Schneider's watching right now. Like, it makes me very nervous because just as of a 24 hours ago, this individual made their profile private, and which it wasn't. Now it's private. But, side note, he is still following my stalker. So let's see what we have here. Let's, um, let's pull up my screen and show who Dan Schneider's good friend is. Okay, so this is John V. Welcome to the munchies, Ray. Welcome to the munchies. And Danielle, hi, Alexa, never forget... What a warrior you are. You don't stand alone. We all stand behind you, and we always will. Thank hashtag Survivors Unite. Thank you so much, Danielle, and welcome, Ray Ray. Thank you so much, you guys. Okay, so here we got John V. Who is John V? John V is John Vaccaro? John Vaccaro. And when I found his Twitter account, it took me a while to find him on LinkedIn. But here he is. He owns some type of LLC called Juicy Orange, which, by the way, is connected to Dan Schneider. But we'll get to that in a second. This is wild, you guys. This is wild. So I find his LinkedIn. I'm like, so who, who, who the fuck is this person? I scroll down just like this, and I go, Juicy Orange. Orange obviously reminds me of Nickelodeon, but it's not Nickelodeon, right? And I scroll down. I'm like... Okay, Showtime, no. Then show all eight experiences. Scroll down. Oh, well, look at what we have here. Director, Nickelodeon, from 1997 to 2000. It says he run the content and business operations of Nickelodeon online. So I'm guessing the website. You're like, Okay, so this guy, hold on. So this guy worked for Nickelodeon. And around the time that Dan Schneider was entering into the Nickelodeon world. You know what I mean? You're like, hold on. So this person's not just friends with Dan Schneider. He worked for Nickelodeon. Worked for Nickelodeon. Okay, 
So before that, he worked for MTV Networks, which, by the way, is Viacom. Viacom, if I remember correctly, owns Nickelodeon. So I'm like, okay, what the fuck is this? Then when I look, goosebumps, you guys, goosebumps. I look down, I go, it says Juicy Orange LLC is a design and technology services company focused on creating websites with content management systems for clients such as General Mills, Nickelodeon, and Hungry Girl. Who knows what Hungry Girl is? I'm going to wait for the chat for this one. Let's see how many people know Dan Schneider all too well. Hungry Girl. Hungry Girl? One's in the chat if you know what Hungry Girl is. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sip on my hot chocolate while I just wait for the chat to, uh, to respond. Hungry Girl. His wife. That's right. Who was the first per Harding. Yes, Harding. His wife. His wife. So not only has he worked for Nickelodeon, not only has he worked for Nickelodeon, he worked or works for his wife. What the fuck is happening? I mean, for real, what is happening? How is this even real life? So I go, okay, well, now I got to look into what the hell Juicy Orange is. So here's Juicy Orange. Right away, we see Hungry Girl. I'm like, okay. So he does work for uh, Dan Schneider's wife. Then I go to the Joe. Like what is that? That's her actual company. That's just her website. Her website. So I guess he, bu he built her website. So I'm like, okay, what the fuck is this? Then here, I guess, is the avatar for John Vaccaro. I click on it. Looks like he's chilling. Probably not today, though. So I look, it goes, John is a digital media executive with 15 years experience developing digital media brands and businesses. After graduating from Cornell University, John joined a small software company where he learned HTML, okay, cool, and began building websites in 1994. He left to pursue, pursue his MBA at the University of Virginia, yada, 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 in New York City, working for Nickelodeon online. What? Oh, he goes on. He goes on. He's very proud about his uh, work at Nickelodeon. Moving on. At Nickelodeon, he was quickly promoted several times. Really? Eventually running all of content operations. John then moved on to sister company, MTVI, and then to team people as vice president of product development. What's very weird about this is that I don't actually personally know John. Hi, John. I'm sure he's probably watching too. I don't know who you are, dude. Never seen you in my entire life until I realize that you are following my stalker who has been trying to ruin my life for a while now. And I met him, or he reached out to me after my protest at Nickelodeon, which is a serious red flag for me personally. So I go, okay, so he worked at Nickelodeon. How does he know my stalker? Worked at Nickelodeon. Now he works for Juicy Orange. Then someone ends up sending me, let me see if I can find it here. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Dan Schneider's website. Has anyone ever seen Dan Schneider's website? Let me see if I can find it really quickly. I think it's right. Here it is. By the way, bro, you know, no offense, John, but like your websites are, I don't know what's going on here. They're not, they're, I, they look like they're from, maybe that's the look you're going for, but it feels like, 
when the internet just began. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, but this is Dan Schneider's website. I'm like, okay. Who runs Dan Schneider's website? Well, well, well. John Vaccaro. John Vaccaro runs Dan Schneider's website too. So not only did he work at Nickelodeon, not only does he work for Dan Schneider's wife, but he also works for Dan Schneider. Please ground me, everyone. Is it weird of me to be, I don't know, beyond sus? Like beyond. Am I overreacting? I don't think I'm paranoid. I don't even want to use that word because this individual follows my stalker and no one knows who my stalker is. No. I'm just following dots. I'm just following dots that are available, public information. Let's see what everyone's saying. Too many connections. There's too many connections. And so let's get to, yeah, let's get to John Vaccaro's Twitter account. So this was the first thing that I found of John Vaccaro, which I thought, I think John Vaccaro never thought that I was actually going to uh, find all of this, but surprise, I had some, some time late at night to uh, scroll, I guess. And look at what I found. So see here, he reposted a Drake Bell tweet. Here is him, I guess, with Ariana Grande's mom. Like, okay, this is 2015. 2015, so this is a while ago. He doesn't use his Twitter, obviously, that often. So what is he using his Twitter for exactly? Scroll down, I think this is Ariana Grande's brother, if I'm correct. Hopefully I'm, I'm correct about that. Then we got Justin Timberlake, whatever. So I'm scrolling. This is what I was doing literally late night. Scroll down. Congrats to my friend at Dan Warp on his Kids' Choice Award Lifetime Achievement tonight at 8 on Nickelodeon. That's what I first found. It's like, wait, 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 wait. Hold on, hold on, hold on. This person is friends with Dan Schneider and following my stalker. I can't remind that enough. Then scroll down, he's posting about iCarly, so it's another Dan Schneider post. Then underneath that, congrats to Hungry Girl. It's like he only used Twitter to talk about Dan Schneider or to possibly maybe spy on me. That's what it feels like, my opinion. Scroll down, I'm like, okay, so that's it. And then it's about Miranda Cosgrove. So it's like all to do with Dan Schneider. There's no other posts when it comes to him on Twitter. So I'm like, okay, so let's go to who he's following. So really important to note here that it says hashtag NFT newbie, which we'll be talking a lot about after I go through this whole segment, which makes him even shadier. So you go to 280 following. We're like, who? Let me see. Kelvin Boy 485. Wasn't Vaccaro the restaurant in Zoe? <gasps> what? Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Hold, hold on. Wait, Kelvin Boy said what? Wasn't Vaccaro the restaurant in Zoe? Which restaurant? Because it wasn't the sushi restaurant. Was it? No. Was it? Wait, Kelvin Boy, oh my God, yes, you're right. Guys, stop. No, 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 no. Is that for real, Jacob? Did they name the Zoe 101 restaurant after, sorry, this creepy guy, in my opinion? Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Okay. Well, I'll wait for someone to confirm that. You found it? Can someone send a link by any chance? If anyone's in the chat who has a link to, to you know, 
prove that Vaccaro was the restaurant on Zoe 101, please put it in the chat. Because that makes this... What? Dude, Vaccaro is blocking you from being able to show... Wait, here it is. Wait. He Wait, let me see. Hold on, hold on. I'm waiting for my chat to catch up. I'm waiting for... The, the chat has been going... The chat... <laughs> I'm like... <laughs> watching the chat. Okay, wait. Here it goes. There it goes. All right, all right, all right. <gasps> hold on, hold on. I'm going to bring this into desktop too. Wait a minute. The Caros! Oh my God. You guys. Wait, was this after? This is after the C. This is when I was gone, right? This is when I left Zoe 101. It looks like it. It looks like this is after. Vaccaro's first appeared in Fake Roommate. In the episode, Coco manages to get herself um, fired from her dorm advisor job and starts to work as a restroom, a, a restroom attendant at a restaurant. It is revealed that Coco hates her job there. She told Zoe to get a hammer and K-I-L-L -L her with it. It's a bit much. Um, in the end, Coco gets hired back at PCA and quit her job at the Caro, which by the way, Coco knew Dan Schneider. Um, my only memory of the character Coco, wait, is it Coco the, yeah, yeah. I remember who Coco is from my memory. She got, I'm pretty sure like offered that job. Like that was an offered role because she knew Dan Schneider and his wife. I'm like 98% positive about this. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure that I'm, uh, I'm saying something very truthful there, which is interesting. And then it goes, dinner for too many. In dinner for too many, Zoe and James dine there for a date. You guys! Oh, John. Dan names the restaurant in Zoe 101 after you. So you guys are very close friends. Like so close to the point where you're, you're getting a shout out basically in a kid's show. What is going on? What is going on? Thank you for the reminder, Calvin, that I wasn't in this season, so I would not have known if it wasn't for you. Okay, so I'm gonna minimize that and save that because that just blew my mind. Moving on here. So I go to who this person is following. Well, 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 what do we have here? Here is my stalker. As you can see, blocked, blocked, blocked. You get why. This, this right here, which I'm 99.9% .9 positive of, is my stalker's, one of many actually, one of my stalker's hate pages about me. Full of lies, full of harassment, etc. This is Shift, and this is Shift's podcast. Not only does he follow just one account of my stalker, he follows all of them. This was in my TRO, if I remember correctly. This account was mentioned in my TRO, which is temporary restraining order, which means it was also brought into my restraining order. And he's following that account. Now, I'm going to speak directly to John here because just in case he's watching. John, there are a couple of, in my opinion, shifts, troll accounts. But the one that I am absolutely, most likely positive of is that account. I find it very interesting that you follow most of shifts accounts, his personal accounts, and then you follow the one that I'm positive of is his troll harassment account about me. 
What's that about? What is that about? You must have way too much time on your feet if you just randomly came across that page. Possible. Absolutely possible. But a little too precise, a little too specific. Because if we go here to my troll account, not mine, my stalkers, he just posted about me, I think the other day. Yeah, January 5th. He's even posting about me. You go to his followers. This is another account that snuck into the Discord. We'll get into that later. Following doesn't follow anyone. How does this account, by the way, has 1,840 followers and it came out of nowhere? How? How is that possible? Well, if you start scrolling down a little bit, here's another account that I'm pretty positive is my stalker. I'm, my stalker is definitely working with this account, this Jinx whatever throwaway account. That's another account. Here's John in the mix. You scroll down. Oh, here's Shift. Okay, got it. Got it. Good, good. Keep scrolling down. Oh, look what we start to see a lot of here. Hashtag NFT. Hashtag NFT. T. Let's go a little bit down. Oh, another hashtag NFT, hashtag NFT. Oh, NFT. And it won't let me, they won't let me see anymore. But you get the gist here. There's a lot of NFT accounts here. And I don't know if you guys remember when it comes to J John. Where are you, John? Oh, there you are, John. Hashtag NFT. Newbie. Now, before, let's go full screen for a second, because I'm going to pull up. I'm going to pull up really quickly. Let me see if I can. Okay. So I'm going to pull up really quickly a couple of things. All right. So then I had to find this individual, John, on Instagram. And when I found him on Instagram, I started to search who he was following just to see if like, you know, trying to be open minded here and see, does he still follow Dan Schneider? Is he still working for Dan Schneider? Is he fond of Dan Schneider? Is he listening to the people who have spoken up against him? You know, I'm trying to figure it out. I go to his Instagram, which, by the way, is now private. Look at my screen. Yeah. Okay. So here's Insta JVAC, which is John. When I looked at who he was following. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's pull it right here. When I looked at who he was following, sure enough, there is Dan Schneider. Dan Warp. He's following Dan Schneider and my stalker. Now, what I found even more interesting about him, you guys, he's following Eat Predators. Dan Schneider's friend, who I guess the restaurant in Zoe 101 was named after, John Vaccaro, is following my stalker, following Dan Schneider, and following E-Predators. Why? Now, last night, I went back to his profile, I went on to my E-Predators Instagram, and I realized he blocked E-Predators. Why? I'm so offended. No, 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 but why? Why did you... Why are you blocking E-Predators now? You know what would have been smarter is to maybe unfollow my stalker. You know what I mean? 
I think it probably would have been smarter, Dan's buddy, if you unfollowed my stalker, because that is what is making you extremely sus. Extremely. And not only are you following Dan, me, my stalker, but you worked for Nickelodeon too? What is happening? What the fuck is happening? And you have to remember, when I started looking into my stalker, obviously to collect evidence when it came to, you know, TRO, RO, et cetera, I was always trying to figure out, like, who did he know? How did he find me? And now I'm starting to get some very weird vibes. Some very weird vibes. I want to play really quickly. You don't have to show my screen, but I'm going to play a snippet of my stalker having a conversation with someone on his podcast where he talks about these troll bot accounts because we're going to start getting into that. We're going to start getting into NFTs and bounty campaigns and what they actually are. Weirdly enough, my stalker has had a conversation about this, and I just want everyone to hear it for themselves. Just, just listen in. Listen in. Mm-hmm. Bernaysian phrasing. <laughs> Outrageous conspiracy theories are introduced into online communities. So many people are anonymous by nefarious forces. It's not that expensive to hire a bunch of trolls yeah. or bots or and who knows yeah. who these people are, yeah. like, or you, what their interests I, are. I know for a fact, and this not on the internet, but because of my experience with Occupy, you can get trolls mobilized essentially for free, really, like it, at like really um, reduced cost, because a lot of the time it's just easy to find people that are in a position where they can be exploited because of their baseline psychology yeah. And they they're, they devalue themselves. They see themselves as not uh, not really worthy of much of anything. And so all it might take is a bottle of whiskey um, to get them to completely carry a message into a community. And Yeah, I... And, I, I and okay. What? Why was he so quick to go, I know? when his guest was talking about how these trolls are basically getting used to the point where we don't really necessarily even know what their intentions are, who they're working for, et cetera. And I know that a lot of people here, especially survivors, et cetera, know about how easy it is to buy followers, right? Like by following, by followers, um, when it came to the AHJD, lawsuit we learned a lot about how even a law firm was allegedly buying these bots to push out these hashtags that were obviously against AH um but to such an extent that it was going viral because of how many bots were pushing out this hashtag within like a 48 hour span, all of a sudden it was just like the number one hashtag pretty much that was being pushed out. And it got led back to this bot company that they said, and I think they were actually pretty much able to prove was bought by the law firm that was representing JD. And I'm saying this because it's very fucking real when it comes to bots, when it comes to controlling hashtags. These are other ways for individuals to infiltrate movements, infiltrate um, entertainment, politics, you name it. The internet is where we all live pretty much now. And if someone can dominate what we are seeing the most on our screen, they can persuade us in a direction that they personally want. That is in alignment with their agenda. So when I heard that, and then I'm hearing 
const or I'm looking and seeing that this hashtag NFT is pretty much the only followers when it comes to the troll account that I'm pretty sure my stalker made. I started looking into NFT bounty campaigns. And I don't know if anyone in the chat knows about this. What is, yeah, you can show my screen. What is NFT bounty campaigns? So first of all, what is an NFT bounty program? An NFT bounty program is a rewards program that uses non-fungible, is that how you say it? <laughs> Tokens, NFT, to instant incentivize people to do certain tasks, complete certain tasks. Participants are rewarded with NFTs for taking part in activities such as creating content, referring new users, and participating in marketing campaigns. So in my opinion, I'm sure at first you're like, oh, NFT, cool. This is a way to get people on the internet to push hashtags, promote um, uh, your new company, show your new product, get it to be trending, et cetera. I'm sure at first there were good intentions maybe when it came to doing these bounty campaigns. It's still capitalistic and I'm still like, eh, but I'm sure that's what it was for the most part. And then like we've learned just surfing the internet, there is the dark web. There is the dark side of the moon when it comes to most things on the internet. And what ended up happening is that people can use crypto money, crypto, Crypto is, can be totally encrypted where there's no trace that you spent that money. They're tokens. It's almost like giving somebody a gift card online. You know what I mean? There's really no trace. And so you can start essentially giving random people Bitcoins to perform specific tasks that you're wanting them to do. So that's why when you're on the internet and you see like, okay, that looks like a bot. And then you can tell when another one doesn't really necessarily feel like a bot. Yeah. Um, were they trading Bitcoin or were they trading the NFT? Well, NFT is a hashtag that helps push out what it's it's really like the hub of crypto um, campaigns. So you hashtag NFT and it gets pushed into the algorithm and gets like pressed into um, like circulation basically. So you use NFT hashtag, whenever these bounty campaigns are happening, they're being used with these um, hashtag NFTs. So half of them are probably bots then you've got actual people that are pushing out the hashtag NFT with whatever agenda the, the person that is paying them or the site that is paying them to do it. So are they not even making NFT tokens? They're or not. NF NFT, whatever. They no, are? they're not. Oh, okay. They're not. They're not making NFT. They're usually basically using these NFT softwares, which by the way, there's all these different NFT softwares. There are also... Apparently, when I was surfing, I found that there are these NFT servers on Telegram and Discord, for example, where these individuals get together, they trade their cash app, they get told to push some hashtag. It could be a brand, it could be a person, it could be whatever, and they get paid back. Even on Reddit, if you search bounty campaigns, you'll see tons of different bounty campaigns happening where people are wanting you to do something, you give them your cash app, you do it, you prove that you did it, and you get even Starbucks. Whatever it is, you actually just get like Bitcoins for it, which is really terrifying to think about because the first way that my personal stalker started to harass me was online. I started seeing all of these random accounts popping up left and right. Lock up Alexa Nicholas, 
which by the way follows John Vaccaro. How does lock lock up Alexa Nicholas know you, dude? That's pretty random. And that is an account that I am also pretty positive is my stalker. And it follows Dan Schneider's friend who nobody even knows. Sorry, John Vaccaro. I have no idea who you are. Pretty random. Pretty random. But what I started to notice is these accounts that are these troll accounts about me, their followers are hashtag NFT, hashtag NFT. It's all hashtag NFT. And to remind everyone, John Vaccaro in his bio on Twitter, it says hashtag NFT newbie. I'm sorry. Now in a hypothetical world, right? Let's just, let's just talk hypothetical right now. Let's say Dan Schneider didn't necessarily like me protesting. Let's say Dan Schneider really did not like me protesting or doing interviews. Let's say Dan Schneider didn't really like any of us, honestly, calling him out in any way. But I guess I really went full throttle showing up to Nickelodeon because for me, it wasn't about just exposing Dan Schneider. It was about exposing Nickelodeon because I believe personally, in my opinion, that they were covering up for Dan Schneider for a very long time. And it's all about the institution. Let's never forget about the institution because if it wasn't for the institution protecting these individuals, they wouldn't be able to get away with the things that they get away with. And they definitely wouldn't be able to get away with it for as long as they get away with it. So I went for Nickelodeon. So let's say Dan Schneider's not fond of it. Let's say Nickelodeon isn't fond of it. And now, who would Dan, who would Dan Schneider call, really? when it comes to being upset about it. If I was Dan Schneider and this was happening, John Vaccaro really seems like the dude to call because he builds websites. This is all hypothetical. He's in the NFT world. He worked for Nickelodeon. He works for Dan. You see where I'm going with this? That connection makes sense. John seems like he's very internet. He's in that world. He makes websites. And a lot of the trolls that were coming out of the experience with my stalker are all NFT accounts. And now that I know that people can get paid Bitcoins, essentially, crypto, to do these bounty campaigns, which by the way, let me pull this up really quickly. It's called, um, and there, there's this article called NFT Spam, the future of smear campaigns and invasive marketing. I'm gonna read a little bit of this. Over here. Okay, so what is NFT Spam? Which I'm sure a lot of people on Twitter have seen this. We all receive spam emails, spam calls, and spam mail. It's unavoidable. And now the same goes for NFTs. Nobody's wallet is safe from NFT spam, especially not anyone notable. NFT spam in its current state comes in two forms. People send their NFTs to random strangers, oftentimes notable NFT collectors, hoping that the entire project will take off. It's unwarranted and therefore spam. People send undesirable NFTs to people's wallets to muddy up their NFT collection and poke fun at them. The first instance is more benign than the second. Q and I have both received countless spam NFTs from people who actually want their other art to do well. It's honestly not that bad in small quantities. So you can see like people are just trying to spread their shit and it doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad thing, but what could happen if the wrong people are using it, right, for the wrong reasons? 
The second instance is mostly reserved for public figures who enter NFTs such as Visa, Budweiser, Coca-Cola, and even Mark Cuban. We all know Mark Cuban. This is so gross, I can't even read this on YouTube. This is what Visa now owns. I don't know if you guys can see this. Visa owns this now. I don't know if you can read it. Read it for yourself. That's how gross NFTs are. Okay. So anyways, nice Visa. Moving on, moving on, moving on. So the future of NFT spam. In the craziest of cases, NFT spam will be the new version of a, I don't know how to say this. Do you abbreviate it like DDoS attack? Uh, it's, yeah, that's DDoS. DDoS. Okay, I was like, please tell me I'm so not internet. Okay, DDoS attack. Uh, a distributed denial of service attack is a method where you send an unmanageable amount of fake traffic to someone's site. Well, well, well. What does John Vaccaro do for a living? John, what do you do for a living? You make websites, right? So you probably, I mean, this is a hypothetical again. This is just me guessing. Maybe you stumbled upon NFTs when it came to driving traffic to danschneider.com because you know no one's visiting in that site unless they're trying to dig up on it and find, um, I don't know, something to, uh, to maybe possibly criticize. You know, so that makes sense. Like, oh, okay, NFTs, NFT spam, using NFT to drive fake traffic to websites. Okay, we're getting somewhere. We're getting somewhere. Amount of fake traffic, you should really take off the N NFT newbie off your profile. It really blows your cover. So causing it to slow down for real users. And if it gets overloaded enough, it eventually crashes the site. Got it. While NFT spam wouldn't necessarily crash someone's wallet, with enough people sending NFTs to someone's wallet, you could clout their wallet up enough to the point where it's too much to manage. So you're like, okay, we get it, we get it, we get it, we get it. Where is this, though? Do, 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 do. Um, right. So basically it's saying, like, I consider NFT marketing spam to be equivalent of Campbell's Soup being able to pay to put their cans in your pantry unwarranted by you. And it goes on to talk about how basically imagine in election season, people can be using these NFTs to make their opponents look like shit, make hashtags like we saw with JDAH, and you get the point. So it seems like it's a, a gateway. It's a gateway into being able to create smear campaigns. And like my stalker said, shift and harassment, correct, and harassment, smear campaigns and harassment. And like shift said, people don't need tons of money to do these things. A coffee will do, and as he said, a bottle of whiskey. It's not like people don't need anything. <laughs> Water will probably do, to be quite honest with you. And all you have to do is what? Make a hashtag or put the hashtag, make an account, comment on the post, whatever. You can do this all from your couch. It seems pretty low key. And then what, you get a few Bitcoins um, through your cash app, which, by the way, I realized that Cash App... You're definitely not getting a few Bitcoins, just saying. No, you're probably getting a lot. No, no, you're probably getting, like, point... Oh, point... Minuscule. Right, 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 right. Because a full Bitcoin would be, like, a lot... Is, is a good 30, amount of money. 30 grand, I think. 30 right grand. Now. So you're getting 0.0001% of a Bitcoin to just post a hashtag. But again, like he said... A Starbucks will do, a bottle of whiskey will do. It doesn't matter. People will do things, especially from your couch, it doesn't matter. But what I started to realize personally for me was when I would talk about specific people that were very, very public, like public figures, like Joe Jonas. Remember my, my tweet about Joe Jonas? Or my tweet about Seth MacFarlane? or even my tweet about Kesha when I was concerned for Kesha. There were so many different accounts that started flooding my Twitter page. And it just felt very bizarre. And they were all saying the same thing. And then when I would look into them, they also had all of these NFT followings. 
I'm still figuring this out, you guys, okay? I'm not here today with all of the answers where I'm like, I know exactly what's happening. All I know is that there's, it's very likely that individuals are a part of these Discord servers, these Telegram chats, and individuals could be offering up 0. 0.000 whatever percent of a Bitcoin to do a content task. And I know it's real. I just don't know to what extent it entered my life and what the full purpose of it was. You know what I mean? And it, these things, these troll accounts, this website that was created about me full of lies did not exist until after I protested Nickelodeon. Didn't. Didn't exist until after Nickelodeon. My stalker shift did not come into my life until after Nickelodeon. And now I find out that Dan Schneider's friend, good friend, so good of a friend that he named the restaurant in Zoe 101 after him, is following my stalker. All of his pages, including the hay page that has the origins of the hate smear campaign website about me. I mean, this is some serious red flags. I didn't even know that bounty campaigns existed. Did you? This is why I think it's really important because survivors already have to go up against community not believing them possibly even family members not believing them or wanting to that wanting them to at least stay silent so that they don't rock the family you know where it's not bringing any attention to the family keep it quiet keep it quiet if survivors who go up against not only public figures. I mean, we're talking about anyone who has enough Bitcoins for a coffee, really. Can be a part of these Discord servers and these Telegram chats to get basically an army against their victim. We have a serious problem there. Because you're going to end up reading something online that's not necessarily true. And I know from a lot of survivors that have come forward about public figures, like very, very public figures, that all of a sudden, all of these different Twitter accounts start popping up. It seems like Twitter is really the place that they go, or I guess it's easy for them when it comes to bots, these NFT accounts, et cetera, and start spreading m mad information, misinformation about the survivor. Why? It could be that this person just is a fan of the public figure and really, really dislikes anyone that goes up against their um, favorite artist or whatever. Or there is a chance that the predator or the institution, which, by the way, I know from within the weeds of everything, that this actually does exist. These bot companies, they call them bot farms. So aside of these NFT real people that get paid to make these hashtags, there are bot farms that the music industry, labels, et cetera, I've heard, use these bot farms to spread out harassment and hate and misinformation about the survivor so that they can keep making money off of the predator. That's what they do. Bot farms. I knew about those. I did not know that you can actually pay real people, like Shift said, that just want a cup of coffee or a bottle of whiskey to harass a survivor secondhand, like secondhand smoke. What does it do? It K I L L S. Doesn't matter if it's first hand, second hand, it's harmful and it perpetuates the ABUSC. 
So for me as a survivor, it was pretty eye opening. And I think it's very important for this community to know that bounty campaigns are real. They exist. They're not necessarily just being used as means to promote some company. They're being used against people. They're being used exactly how they sound, bounty campaign. You know what I mean? Like it sounds like exactly what it sounds like against individuals. And they're being used for smear campaigns. Now, when it comes to me, I don't have the um, cash app receipts from anybody. <laughs> don't have that. But what I find very interesting is that this individual who worked for Nickelodeon, who is friends with Dan Schneider, who has on his profile bio, hashtag NFT newbie, is following my stalkers pages and the hate account that was created about me, the entire following list is all hashtag NFT. J2001, Alexa, did you hear about what happened to Miss Universe Indonesia last summer? No, I didn't. Please share what you have. I'm very curious to know. No, I didn't. I didn't. But it's just very freaky. And, you know, Shift really came out. I mean, he's even following the podcast. He's following Shift's podcast. He's following, and this is a real person, by the way, John um, Vaccaro. Like, that's his actual Twitter page. He's followed by Whole Foods, um, even Britney Spears, uh, strangely enough. And you're like, okay. So this person's an industry person, knows Ariana Grande's um, mother, brother. And you're like, uh, okay. So it's a real account and he's never on it. He's not tweeting. You can see like the last time he actually like tweeted was like in 2015 and it was about Dan Schneider basically. All of them are pretty much about Dan Schneider. Am I wrong? I'm, I'm wondering if did like something happen maybe that he like kind of was like, oh shit, I gotta, I gotta like be more low key. Like is that when maybe the stuff True. Dan started popping off? True, actually. Well, I don't know if Sloan is in here, if Sloan's watching, but I'm not sure when on YouTube these videos started popping up when it came to criticism around Dan Schneider. Was it before the Me Too movement? I'm gonna I'm gonna wait for the chat on this. Like when did people start hearing about the creepiness of of Dan Schneider? Was it after 2016 or was it before 2016? Cause I don't even know. I can't even, let's see. We appreciate um, the trigger warning. It's a very disturbing story. So tread cautiously when looking into it. it could be, okay, thank you so much. Thank you for the trigger warning. I will look into that tonight. Yes, please share the article. Thank you so much. So, yeah, Sloan. So I don't know when, when Dan Schneider's, um, I don't know, like, People expo you know, the exposing YouTube um, headlines, et cetera, started popping up when it came to Dan Schneider. But it probably was around that time. But it doesn't matter because he's doesn't even use his Twitter in general. And then also on top of that, he still follows Dan Schneider. He's following Dan Schneider right now. He's following me still. And you know what's so interesting, John? Is I don't think I would have saw you on my stalkers following situation if it wasn't for the fact that you followed me because it doesn't let me see every single person that's following, you know, an account. It just shows you kind of what um, is either in the algorithm or a mutual, et cetera. And what made me scroll down, if I would have clicked on him and just saw it was like this random person, the reason why I scrolled down was because it said, follow back. Like, follow back? Why does this person that follows Shift follows me? And so when I scroll down, that's when I know Jaden can say in the chat, I was tripping out. I was messaging my friends to be like, please tell me this is 
am I okay to say that this is very sus, very weird? What's the connection here? I don't think I'm really stretching here. I don't. It'd be one thing if I never spoke about Dan Schneider and I was just like, you know, on Zoe 101, whatever. But you have to remember, I have spoken a, a lot about Dan Schneider and I've protested Nickelodeon and it's not, not that big of a stretch. And then when you learn about these Bitcoin talk signatures, avatar campaigns, social media campaign, smear campaigns, bounty campaigns, Bitcoin, and remember, crypto is encrypted. It can be anonymous. There doesn't necessarily need to be a trace when it comes to this. So it seems like the perfect way to do things anonymously. And again, like I said, I don't have any cash app receipts to show. I only have the receipts of the following. And now John is private on Instagram. He still follows me on Instagram, but he blocked E Predators and he follows E Predators. Like, it's not even like he follows just me. He knows about E Predators, which means he knows, which means he was, he's watching. I mean, technically, he's following me that I'm showing up on his feed. It's like keeping an eye. And what I was honestly kind of hoping was that maybe he would message me and go, oh, I have, you know, I don't know, you know, something. No, he's not defending himself. He's not saying anything. He's still following my stalker because I guess that would look pretty shady to just unfollow. Still following him. Still following me. Still following Dan Schneider. I don't know. I'm like, it's, it's pretty concerning. Like I'm, I don't know. I just don't feel good about it. I'm going to keep looking into it too. Like I'm just, my gut feeling just, it doesn't sit right with me. Nobody knows shift like that. You know what I mean? This is not somebody who, my soccer just doesn't happen to be like an influencer or something. You know what I mean? Or a celebrity. This is somebody with six, you know, an av like 60 followers, you know, and a lot of them are NFT too. And that's another weird connection. You know, this is just somebody normal, random, not normal, but you get what I'm saying. So how? Like, what do you guys think in the chat? Like, I actually want to hear in the comments. I want to hear in the chat what you all think of this. How is this even possible? I just don't, you got, it's just, <laughs> like, there's no way that he knows him by, like, they live in different places, too. I think different states, <laughs> different states, I think. Like what? Wait, wait, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go to my computer just to see what the chat's saying. Definitely not a coincidence. Okay, so most people are thinking it's not a coincidence. I don't think so either. And that's why I'm actually honestly hoping John's watching this because this is so sus. Like this is like wild. <laughs> Why explain yourself? Like explain wh what's going on here. You haven't used your Twitter even like since like 2015, but somehow following. And I'm yeah, predators conspire. That's right. Survivors inspire, predators conspire. I love, wait, who said that? Juliet. That's amazing, Juliet. It's, it's giving me that vibe. And what's so weird about it is I've never heard of this, um, never heard of this person before. It's not like even an exec or somebody that I personally knew, you know? Like, I'm like, who? John Vaccaro and like, 
works for Nickelodeon. And uh, I don't know, just for like the, the, the heck of it right now, when did Brian Peck start working at Nickelodeon? Maybe we have some people that know um, a trivia when it comes to this, because I actually don't. I don't know when, when Brian Peck started working for Nickelodeon, but I feel like it was possibly around the same time uh, that John Vaccaro was working at Nickelodeon. Was it 1998? With all the connections lining up the way they are too perfect. I know. I agree. I mean, it's weird. It's like very, very weird. Thanks, Jordan. I am going to trust my gut. Wait, what is Jay saying? Around the same time, yes. Okay, so it was around the same time. Okay, so this is really interesting. So we have John Vaccaro working at Nickelodeon in 1997, left 2000. I wonder why, because in his bio, he loves bragging about Nickelodeon. <laughs> He's like, I got promoted so quickly, blah, blah, blah. I wonder why you were getting promoted so quickly. Um, and then, but then all of a sudden you're gone, 2000. You're out of there. I wanna know what that's about, so that's a question mark. So people, if anyone's into like digging, report back in the Reddit. Why all of a sudden 2000, he's out of there. Maybe he got offered a higher paying gig. I'm not really sure, but it seems like he still continued to work for Dan Schneider past um, 2000. Um, no, I don't think you need to show it quite yet. But what's his name? So the president, the current president of Nickelodeon is an individual who I did a video about him recently about Brian Peck. He did, what was it? Uh, Head of class, is that what it's called with Dan Schneider? I always forget what it's called. Head of class, he was in it with Dan Schneider. Let's see if I can find it. Dan, yeah, it's, it was a show, it was like an, uh, let's see, is it called Head of Class? It is, it's called Head of Class. And what's the dude's, what's the guy's name who's now the, uh, I know Jaden's gonna know pretty quickly. <laughs> Um, let me see here. What's his name? Nope, 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 nope. Wait, is his name Brian? Is it another Brian Robbins? It is. I think it's Brian Robbins. Let me look it up. Brian Robbins Nickelodeon. Yep, dude. dude this is so wild. I mean, this shit's... I'm not into, like... I'm not saying this is a conspiracy, but, like, you can totally pull this up. Okay, so... Brian Robbins. Brian Robbins is the CEO of Paramount Pictures and Nickelodeon. He was in the show with Dan Schneider called Head of Class when they were younger. Here he is younger. Look at him. That's him younger. I don't know if we can actually pull up Head of Class right here. I'm curious. But he was the one who started producing all that. So Dan Schneider got through the door of Nickelodeon through, and I mean, from what I've seen so far, through Brian Robbins. And if I remember correctly, that was in the 90s. <laughs> and so I wouldn't be surprised if John Vaccaro also knows Brian Robbins. I don't think that's that big of a stretch. I'm sure they do. And what's very interesting, I, I heard the Ned's Declassified uh, cast members talking about that their show wasn't getting the reboot, whatever, and it was because I think most likely Brian Robbins is really only pushing out Dan Schneider reboots. We got iCarly, we got Good Burger, we got Zoe 102. I mean, I don't know if there's another one, but that's enough, you know what I mean? Like, I don't even know of any other Nickelodeon reboots that are currently happening. I don't. Are there? I mean, are there? I don't, I don't think so. And it just so happens that Brian Robbins was very close with Dan Schneider. Dan Schneider got into the doorway, and I think it was also around 1998 that the foot was starting to be used for Nickelodeon. 
which is interesting because that's around the exact same time that Dan Schneider was entering the world of Nickelodeon. I don't know. It's just weird. There, there's a, some weird little, little, little connection here. And then wasn't all that taken over by Dan Schneider? Like then Dan Schneider ends up doing the reboot of all that, if I remember correctly. I mean, I, I don't, I don't think I'm wrong. I don't think I'm wrong. No, just Dan shows, right, Jaden? Who are you, John? And are you, you're still friends with Dan? Are you looking at my page because you're friends with Dan? Like that's, you know what I mean? And, but, but, but that's one thing. It listen, I wouldn't be that weirded out. I would still be weirded out. Not this weirded out. If he was just following me. Okay, whatever. Dan has a friend that's following me. Oh, it's weird, but it's not like, whoa, you know? He's following my stalker. Restraining order. My daughter has a restraining order against this person, John. You know what I mean? And then you're following the account that is really, that I know the most of, directly related to him. And it has that harassment, defamatory website attached to it. And you make websites. And the reason why I am 98%, no, I'm going to change that, 99.9% .9 positive that that website was created by my stalker is because if you can find out when a website was created and it was literally the day after he was um, kicked out of the Discord, et cetera. The day that he was starting to show the, the really the done, done, done. Um, and, and I didn't meet him until after the Nickelodeon protest. And like, let's just say like, you know, let's just, let's do another hypothetical. What's the point of infiltration? What's the point of it? What's the purpose of controlled oppositions? What's the purpose of smear campaigns? The purpose is to discredit your opponent. Discredit the person that might be speaking up against you. There is a lot to protect, especially when it comes to institutions, companies, etc. There's a lot to protect there. There's money, reputation, et cetera. And so when you look at the history of infiltration, controlled opposition, even just like smear campaigns, I'm not trying to get Russell Brand here where I'm like, you know, it's not a conspiracy. It's just me following dots and just being like, let's have a conversation about it. When you look, though, into the history of that, these things happen. And I'm not, this is not a stretch. It's not a stretch. These dots are getting connected. And it's just, what do they mean, right? That's the final question mark. What do these dots, what do these connections actually mean? I have tons of different ideas, and I'm sure you do too. But it's enough to go, I don't like it. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's enough for me to go, I'm feeling, I'm leaning a little other way than the other way. What's the, why? And so, I mean, to be honest with you, John, you can totally explain yourself here. <laughs> like if you, I'm not even kidding. I, I, I honestly, someone reach out to him. I want to know why you follow my stalker. And if you have an actual reason for that, I would like to know why. Because it's pretty sus and I'm giving you a full opportunity to either come here and or through Zoom, whatever you want to do um, to explain what that is, because it's concerning enough for me and um, I don't like it. I would like an explanation and I'm sure the community would too. Like I'm just sure that we would all like to know what you have to say when it comes to that. 
just very weird. And you have to remember that Michael Milos also is wrapped up in all of this. It's so weird. And Red Light, which will be an episode for another day. But all of these people seem to all be interconnecting, intertwining, and there is a connection of the dots. It's not even just, I mean, the most poignant one, to be quite honest with you, is Dan Schneider and this guy, John. But there is Michael Milos talking to Autumn for God only knows how many years during this harassment, et cetera. Because he also, just to remind everyone, Michael Milos also follows my stalker. So what's going on? You know, I'm just getting a little bit, what's going on? And Red Light was reaching out to this Alexa Nicholas 21 um, defamatory harassment Twitter page. So it's important for, I want this episode at the very least to, as a survivor community and allies, when you see a defamatory comment about a survivor online and you're like, what is this? You know, and you read it. I want you to have the awareness that that comment, that post, that retweet can be happening because and possibly for the alleged predator. You know what I mean? Like it can be posted possibly to defend the alleged predator from the alleged predator. And even if it's not necessarily the alleged predator, it could be the institution that wants to keep that alleged predator around because it's making them a lot of money. And to have, just make proper discernment when it comes to what you're reading online, what you're seeing online, what hashtags you're seeing. Look at the following. I think the first um, new red flag for me is if you see an account posting um, random things that you're like, eh, that kind of feels a little bit weird. Look at the following and see if you see hashtag NFT and how many. I'm sure I even have probably some hashtag NFTs because they traffic themselves to places um, that they're going to be posting about. But just keep an eye on that because it's pretty. And Autumn, Kaylee, Ning, Neela, what do we have here? Brandon, it would be a good place to talk about Brian Peck and Conviction. Yeah, I mean, Brian Peck literally con convicted, right? Charged, et cetera. Serve time, and then Disney hires him when, he's, when he gets out of jail. I mean, that's just... Who are these people? And they make him the mirror, because you better fucking believe that Disney knew about it. <laughs> Sorry, Disney. This is my opinion. I'm sure... I hope you're doing background checks, right? Around children? Which one is it, Disney. You didn't do background check or you did background check and that's why you made him the mirror. Because the only reason you would make him the mirror is because, you know, uh, an S offender is not allowed to be physically around children. So if you have them as the mirror, as the voice, they're not physically there. You're like, pretty convenient, Disney. But are we financially rewarding um, PDF files now? What? It's pretty uh, alarming. I don't trust any of these companies, honestly. I've seen enough. I didn't even think I was going to see what I saw the last few nights when it comes to these dots. And I'm constantly surprised. I'm constantly educating myself. I'm constantly having to unlearn things. And I think very small a lot of the time. And then I realize that these things actually span out. And there's a bigger picture to things. And, um, yeah, I just think it's very important for this community to know about bounty campaigns know about who John Vaccaro is, and Anonymous. Alexa, have you heard of Nickelodeon's Rugrats Dark Storyboards? It's absolutely disgusting that even the animators were weirdos. What are you talking about? I think this person said something earlier today. They no-no boards or something. I can't find it, but thank you. Know, you so I read their. I read their something about no-no board. What is? Is there a link to this? Thank you so much, anonymous. Yeah, po post in the Reddit if you have info on. Yeah, it. true. If there's any info when it comes to Nickelodeon, 
Brian Robbins, um, John Vaccaro, it's like the list goes on, um, any of them, Nickelodeon in general, please, in the E Predators Daily Reddit, please post whatever you know. Because I'm personally trying to put this together now because you have to understand this is like a risk to my actual life, this person. And so if there is any connection, you know, between these individuals, I need to know. Um, and it, it, it matters. And so I'm trying to dig into all of these different networks when it comes to children, et cetera, because I only have my personal experience and what I personally know or what I've personally seen. Um, but I, I'm constantly learning and wanting to learn from other people that have stories to tell, et cetera. I think it's important. I really, really do, especially since we're talking about kids' networks. You know what I mean? They're kid networks. This is Nickelodeon. This is Disney. You know, and yeah, power to survivors. This is what this community is for. It's time for like survivors to be like educating each other, speaking out, you know, no fear. Not like that works all the time. I'm not gonna be, I'm gonna be honest, like it's not like I didn't have I had I have fear. Um, but I'm be pushing through my fear. Um, but it's important for us to to be able to the only way that we can educate each other and stand up for one another is if we are uniting and having some type of access to be able to share our stories. And each story is so unique that there is something to learn and something to feel from every single survivor story there is. And so I promised everyone to, I know I wasn't able to do this last uh, last week, but for those that are just tuning in, don't show my screen. Um, I'm gonna be uh, reading the survivor story of the week. And just to remind everyone here, if you would like to share your story um, anonymously, however, please email at epredators at gmail.com. Um, make the caption survivor of the week and please say in the email that you uh, give consent for me to read your story and then just let me know if you want it to be your name or if there's a uh, anonymous etc um, but we usually do this every Thursday but it was pretty intense last week so I couldn't and now we're in Monday and I do want to read this story so survivor of the week, I just want to make sure I'm saying this name. Um, use my, okay. Um, so this is Madison. Um, you don't have to add this part. I wanted to stay up, so I just want to say thank you. Thank you, Madison. Okay, so here's a trigger warning. Uh, trigger warning, S-A, D-V, and emotional A-E-A. -A. Just for some background, I am a survivor of S.A. as a child by multiple people in my family and also witnessed D.V. between my parents. I just wanted to speak about how insane it is, how quick people are to berate and criticize survivors for coming out with their story years and even decades after it happened. It's insane to me that there is little to no compassion for how hard and complex these things are to process, let alone talk about. And with that, survivors don't even have to talk about every single detail for people to respect their boundaries. In my late 20s now, I'm in my late 20s now, and I haven't told a single soul what had happened to me until this year with my therapist, who I had already been seeing for seven years. It just goes to show that even in the safest of spaces, it can be extremely difficult to talk about. It's something I didn't even dare hint at in therapy. In therapy, because of all the shame I felt. I didn't even choose to bring it up that day. I just offhandedly was telling her about how my parents weren't home most of the time, leaving my older brothers and I home to fend for ourselves, and how I was exposed to some very adult things at a young age. 
When I brought it up, I was more so talking about the adult movies and shows my brothers used to watch which I was with while I was with them, exposing me to extremely graphic male gazy S-E-X scenes. But before I could get there, she asked me if I was ever essayed. Even when I finally started to talk about it with her in an incredibly safe space, I wasn't even able to utter specific details. I can relate. I was still vague out of shame and embarrassment. Even now, I haven't told the full story to my fiancé, who I've also been with for seven years, and there's no one I feel safer with than him. He knows something occurred along those lines, but has never pushed me to say more than I'm comfortable with. He also always accommodates me when it comes to respecting my boundaries around intimacy. He was very open to hearing me when I told him that because of what happened to me, it's hard for me to blank most of the time. And that even when I am interested mentally and emotionally in being intimate, sometimes my body still remembers and won't cooperate accordingly. Very relatable. Which, side note, makes me even more angry at my A-B-U-S-C-R-S because I have something so beautiful with my partner and the intimacy I share with him is so sacred to me and it's been continuously ruined for me because of my A-B-U-S-E. Of us can relate in here. They ruin my life in every aspect and they don't even know it. He's shown great understanding of this and is extremely communicative by always checking in with me before, during, and after. I know he respects me and values me all while not knowing a single detail about what happened. Sounds like a credible partner. I'm really happy for you, Madison. It just doesn't make sense to me why most people can't have the same respect for all survivors, regardless how long it takes them to say anything, or if they even want to say anything at all. Survivors don't even don't have to explain every detail with anyone ever if they don't want to. So true. And people can still respect and value their boundaries. Lastly, I just wanted to share a little side note about EA. I'm also a survivor of EA. As many people know, EA goes hand in hand with SA and DV. Correct. And it's a form of ABUSE that I still face from my predators to this day. I just wanted to shed some more light on EA survivors. Yeah, absolutely. And that there are some survivors that haven't experienced SA or DV, so true, but are survivors of EA. And their stories and experiences are just as valid as any other survivor. EA is just as devastating and taxing when it comes to mental health and is so normalized in every aspect of our lives that it gets overlooked. If you are a survivor of EA, we see you and hear you. And your experience holds just as much weight as any other survivor. Absolutely. Thank you for giving me the space and time to share a little bit about my story and my thoughts. And thank you again for all the advocacy work that you do for survivors. I'm so excited to see what's to come of this movement as it helps empower us to keep standing up to predators and showing them their time is running out. TikTok, you fucking cowards. <laughs> Madison ends it. Madison, power to you. Power to Madison. Power to Madison. I'm sure let's show a lot of hearts in the chat. Adam, I'm not sure if this individual is here, but you are seen. You are heard. It was such an honor to read your story. Thank you for being here. Um, that was honestly really beautiful because it's so true about EA. Um, there are a lot of survivors of EA. And for example, I feel like um, someone who has been very brave about coming forward about that against a very public figure would be Sarah Brady, speaking about Jonah Hill. And it really taught, I think, the world about the impacts of EA and um, how devastating it can be and manipulative. And it, I'm also a survivor of EA as well. And it does usually go hand in hand with SA and DV, but there's also just EA survivors out there. And it is important to take note of them and um, give them power. So power to EA survivors. Thank you so much. Let me see. Did I miss something up here? I just want to make Ray Ray gifted. Oh, Ray Ray gifted. That's so sweet. Oh, and Nat. Nat's here. Nat gifted too. This is so, this is community is, um, and I'm going to end the episode um, now that we're kind of getting now back to normal programming. 
and we'll be going into a lot of different topics this week. Um, I do want to just remind everybody that this is a, um, we don't have any sponsors, Free Predators. So I, when I was talking about my trauma, I did not want to go into any of this. Um, and now I feel comfortable going into this. Um, we don't have any sponsors for Eat Predators. Um, this is a complete DIY, grassroots, ways to support this channel, liking it, subscribing, sharing it, setting your notifications when um, we're going live, um, becoming a member, there's three different tiers. Some of them give you dis uh, Discord access, which is an incredible, beautiful community of allies and survivors that are just so, so incredible. Also for the dinner party and chef's kiss, we're doing social change now, um, figuring out our own unique voices when it comes to social change and um, social movements, social justice movements. And we're doing Hard Feelings, Jeanette McCurdy. We're listening to a wonderful podcast and speaking about our own hard feelings and sharing them and um, doing our own voice memos as well. And we also have the Patreon. I just really want to say this because we have a ally by the name of Christian. And Christian's trying to make it to the protest. We have a protest coming up. Thursday, and I'm not saying where it is because we're gonna surprise them. This one, we're gonna surprise them. I don't want them to take. I don't want them to take the day off, if you know what I mean. So we're not gonna tell them we're coming, um, but but we are going somewhere this Thursday, and an ally would like to be able to make it to this protest, and they don't have fully all of the funds to do it, and so I'm reaching out to community. If you can, fifty dollars is for round trip to get a few people to be able to show up in solidarity for survivors. And the way to do that through the Patreon, through a super um, chat or membership, whatever, each person, $1, whatever, um, donating to help this person be able to drive and stand in solidarity with survivors. So reaching out to community, however you wanna do it. We also have the Patreon in general, just know it exists. I'm not going into it today, it gives you access q and a q and a is coming up this friday um that's for patreon members um letting everybody know and the sweater we have merch and that's a great way of spreading awareness for survivors standing in solidarity um allies survivors united um we have t-shirts tote bags etc this is the hoodie that i'm wearing and just so you know the hoodie actually runs pretty small <laughs> So definitely size up, like size one, size up. I was shocked how small it actually is. Um, so we have the merch. And yeah, these are great ways. Just remember the Patreon also can help people be able to get gas, et cetera, to come to these protests. So please, please help in any way that you can. And thank you so much for everyone who has been here on this journey of connecting dots and... Um, learning along the way and survivors united that's really what this last couple weeks felt like and thank you so much for being here tomorrow is um a surprise so um i guess just check your notifications later on tonight and uh you'll see what we're talking about tomorrow and again if you find anything about dan schneider john vaccaro brian robbins nickelodeon please email or put it into our e Predators daily reddit and thank you to all the new members thank you to the members here thank you to the mods um thank you to quiet who you don't see but you probably see in the chat <laughs> um and uh thank you melanie for the thumbnail bye you guys i'll see you tomorrow